everyone, it's Sarah. Welcome back to another video tutorial at Mrs. Lincoln's Inkin. Today I wanted to show you how I made this pinwheel card that I posted to my blog earlier this week, as well as that little label um, that I made using the decorative label punch. So let's go ahead and get started. First, what you're going to need for your pinwheel is you're going to need two pieces of cardstock. They can be scrap cardstock, any color that you want because they're going to be hidden. So it doesn't matter if there's, you know, writing on them or what have you. These two pieces need to be cut at 2 and 5 eighths by 2 and 5 eighths. And your 5 eighth mark is two marks right after your half inch mark. Then you need one piece of colored cardstock cut at 3 by 3 and then a total of eight squares. You need four of them to be in a DSP and these are cut at four and one quarter by four and one quarter and then four more in a plain cardstock or in another DSP. These are also cut at four and one quarter by four and one quarter. So let's get started. First what we need to do is we need to take our two pieces of cardstock and we need to adhere to them so they make kind of like a diamond shape right there. So it'll look like that. So I'm just going to take my snail and I'm just going to run this along the back. Try and line them up as best as possible so one of the points isn't hanging off more than any of the others and then just stick it down. So now it looks like that. So to start building our pinwheel, we need our squares. When we're building our pinwheel, for the first square that we put down, we need to line up one of the points with our DSP or normal cardstock and line it up with one of the points on our shape that we made. But we don't want to stick it down all the way here in the middle. We just want to leave it loose for right now. So then we're going to alternate colors. So now I'm going to use um, my card my plain cardstock and I'm using the pumpkin pie. And for my DSP I'm using the Sycamore Street DSP. Stick that down and then get another piece of DSP. The nice thing about these pinwheels is that you can make them pretty much any size that you want. You just have to compensate for the you know, size of your squares for your pinwheel, but you can make it a larger pinwheel, a smaller pinwheel, it doesn't matter. That's one of the things I love about things like this, when you can change it up and it doesn't have to be the same thing all the time and just continue to go around your card alternating your DSPs and cardstock. Okay, so now when we get where we only have two more points left, what's going to happen if you just keep going around the DS or around the shape? You're going to have your last piece of cardstock that looks like that. And that doesn't necessarily look right because you have those two pieces together right there. So what we want to do is that's why we left this open. So we're going to take our normal cardstock and stick it underneath that piece of DSP on that point right there. Stick it right there on that point just like that and now we can stick that down. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to take our DSP and we're going to put it underneath that flap right there. Line it up with the point. So now it all flows together just like that. So when you get done with your pinwheel you're going to have a little spot in the middle where you can see the underneath um, cardstock. So what I like to do is I'm going to use my antique brads and my paper piercer and I'm going to pierce a hole right in the middle just like that. Take a brad and put it right in there. And now you could use a um, circle punch with another color paper if you wanted or a pearl or a button or but I like the look of the antique brads. And that's what the pinwheel looks like. 
So now we're going to take our um, piece that we cut at three by three, and this is the wild wasabi, and we're just gonna stick our pinwheel right down to that. Line the square up here. And there we go. So now we have a nice border going around our pinwheel. So now I already went ahead and pre-decorated my card. This is an average card cut at four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And you cut it that way, you cut it at four and a quarter and score at five and a half if you want your card to open like this. If you want a normal card where it opens like this, you would cut at five and a half and score at four and a quarter. So it's always the same measurements, it's just how you put your paper in your trimmer. So again, I used the Sycamore Street DSP and then I used my scallop border punch in the Wild Wasabi just to give it a little extra something. And then I'm just going to put adhesive down here on the back of my pinwheel. And then stick this right to the front of my card. There we go. How cute! So now to make this little label punch right here, I use the decorative label punch. And to do that, I'm using the Petite Pears um, stamp set. And I love this stamp set because the sayings are small um, to do in little labels like that. So this is a go-to stamp set for me. And I'm using the Best Wishes stamp for this project and my pumpkin pie ink. So what you want to do for this is you want to ink your image up and I'm just going to place it right here on my cardstock. And when you place it, you want to leave a little bit of room down here. You don't want to do it right to the edge. We're going to take our decorative label punch and we want the end of our punch here, the decorative part right here at the end, to be at the top of our words. And it doesn't matter if it's uneven on your paper right now, we can fix that. So I'm just going to slide this in like that, get it center and even, and then I'm, and then I'm going to punch. And see how crooked that is right there? That doesn't matter. We can fix that. So now you need a regular post-it note. Post-it note is very important for this technique. What you want to do is stick your post-it note on the side or the end that you're going to punch. And the post-it note is vital because this allows you to get your, um, your little tab right there into the punch because it's so small. So let me see, make sure that you can see that. Right there on those two little circle parts right here, you want to make sure that those look like circles. That's what's going to give us the effect of the label. So we're going to line this up, make our circles on the end, and punch. And then it turns out like that. How cute. So now to make a border, you want to just take the end of the punch again on some DSP, and it doesn't have to be very much and you want to punch two of those ends out. And again, I'm using the wild wasabi. So I'm just going to place snail here on the end of my um, label that I just made. And I'm going to put this on there on the wild wasabi just like that. And that's going to give it a really nice border. And it's small, so you got to work with it a little bit. And there you go. So now stick it up with a dimensional. And place it on my card. And there you go. There's the finished pinwheel card. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Until next time, happy inking!